Hey guys, how you doing? And welcome to this episode of Craig's Dungeon. As an owner of a lot of technology, stereo equipment, turntable, computers, things like that, I have often have to get something onto my workbench to see where there's a problem. Now today, I have a problem with one of my loudspeakers. And so I'm gonna show you the problem, I'm gonna explain it, and I'm gonna to try to fix it over here on the bench. All right, well, here's my messy desk. And uh, there's my speakers, as you can see at the top right and the top left, I've got my um, Elisis studio monitors. And these were donated to me, given to me by a very good friend of mine. He gave these to me a while back. To make a long story short, he just upgraded to a, a better system. They're great speakers and they sound awesome, but there is a slight problem. Let me show you. So let's look at this speaker here. This is where the problem is. I've got electrical tape over the, that's where the LED is, a big blue LED there that shines brightly. And I like to listen to music in the dark. So when I put these speakers, mounted them on this desk, as I have done here, as you can see, pardon my camera work, take your gravel guys, the L brackets holding the speaker onto the side of the desk there. Same with the other side, of course. Right, so they're a little more spread out and a little bo bit lower, so I can hear better. Um, when I was mounting these brackets, I actually had to move the speakers out the way. So when I did that, I unplugged the audio jack from the back of the speaker, and part of this plug actually stayed inside of the jack in the back of the speaker. It remained in there, and I could not get it out. So I had to take the whole speaker apart. I had to take the jack inside the speaker all apart. What a nightmare that was. Um, it was just a terrible thing. I didn't think I was gonna ever get it back together. There was like 25 little pieces of brass, little strips of metal that fell out and were all over the place. I didn't know how to put them back in. Anyway, I got it back together and fixed it all up and it works. So let's plug it back in and I'm gonna show you the second problem that I now have, which I now have to see if I can fix. So let's turn the speakers, I think they're already turned on. Let's turn up this mixer here. Now you're not gonna hear this, probably. It's a 35, actually a 40 hertz tone, very low frequency, but more than likely, you're going to see, be able to see the the woofer moving. I don't know. Uh, let me just turn it up a little bit more, so you can see that. And you probably most of what you're hearing is not actually the frequency that the 35, whatever it is, 40 hertz frequency. Uh, it's like a hum, but you're probably hearing mostly the air that's coming out of these holes. And I can actually feel the air. Now you don't hear that normally when you're listening to music. All right, let's put a piece of paper in front of that and see if it... You see it? There, it's moving, see? There's quite a lot of air coming out of there. Now, that provides bass to the speakers. That's what gives it... These are called tuned bass ports, and that's what provides the ability for the speakers, these small speakers, to have such a great bottom end. Now, in order for that to work, the speakers have to be sealed. They have to be airtight so that the only place where the air can move in and out of the, of the cabinet is these two holes. So even if I put the microphone in front of one of these holes, you might even be able to hear the wind. All right, so now let's switch to the other speaker. Pan it over to the left and turn it up. Uh-oh. Can you hear that sort of airy buzzing sound? Yeah, there's a leak. There's an air leak in these speakers. These holes are not able to operate properly if there's another spot on the cabinet where air can actually get in and out of the cabinet. Let's turn the speaker around and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, this is gonna be really hard for me to show you on camera. What I've determined is that this is this, this here. Well, let me just raise the camera up a little so you can see it. This little knob right here is a volume control. Well, I can feel air coming out. My hands are dirty. But no, I've handled some old rubber belts a few minutes ago. Um, this volume control is not 
sealed. It's not seated properly against the back of the cabinet. So obviously when I put this speaker together to fix this plug, I did not do something correctly. So now I'm gonna take the speaker apart and see what we've got. All right, here's the speaker, fingerprints and all. And we're gonna turn it around and just show you uh, the back here. Um, as you can see, we're looking at this. So we've gotta remove this whole back panel here is what we gotta do. Don't mind the uh, <laughs> monitor, that's so that I can see what I'm, what I'm filming. So, we've got, Oh, four, eight, ten, ten screws have to come out. All right, uh, that should do it. Okay, there we go. So this just pops off like this. And there are some wires here, as you can see, that we're gonna have to remove. Um, they just unplug. So I've done this a few times. Um, I'm just going to, see there's a whole other circuit board there. I'm just gonna unplug them so that we can free this up. Uh, that way I can work on it without restrictions. So I think they just pull off. Yeah, sort of just pull off. There's little clips you sort of lift with your finger. And they just pull right off, okay? So now let's get this thing organized here. Let's put it this way so we can see. So here are the, um, Here's the knob here, and that whole apparatus. So we'll turn it around, we'll set it on here so we can work on it. And it's this little circuit board. Let me just zoom it in for you here. Okay. This little circuit board right here. Okay. I'm gonna have to take this thing off again. So there's, there's one screw here. And there's two on the other side holding in the, um, the jack. Yeah, this was a real this was a real nightmare when this actually happened when the jack little piece of the plug got stuck in here. I don't I didn't even know if I was going to be able to fix it, um, but I was determined to do something even if I had to hotwire it. But I managed to get it after several hours to get it out and not without sort of causing some damage to this though and I'll show you, I'll just turn this around if you can see that you see where I wasn't able to get it back together all the way I had to actually unsolder all these and re remove this whole jack and then take the jack apart and to get the little piece out when I was putting it back together you can see it. It works great, but you can see that it's not all the way together. And I think that might be part of our problem because air can actually get through here. And when I took this apart the first time, they had like electrical tape around it and I couldn't figure out why they had electrical tape around it. Now I know. So that's something we're going to have to look at. Now what else do we have here? So there's the volume control. Um, so what's happening is that when I put this in, let's see what happens when that volume control, you kind of have to work it in there. Excuse my hand for a moment. There we go. So there it's going in and it just screws in like that. And you know, you, you see, you can see, I can see that that volume control is not touching the plate that it sits on. So well, that's where the air's coming out. So uh, now I'm starting to think that maybe like it's kind of touching but not really. Just let me take a quick look at it here quick with my own eyes instead of looking at it on the... Yeah, it's not touching. It looks like it on camera but it's actually not. So I wonder what... I gotta be careful. I don't... I wonder what... Uh, why that is. Okay, so first of all, um, well, you see how I didn't get this quite soldered on all the way. I did it as quick, as best I could without damaging the board. And so what's happening is that this board is actually not mounting onto this plate all the way. It's sticking up a little bit. 
and I didn't notice this before, but it's just sticking up enough that it's letting air go through from, actually, you know what? It looks like there was a rubber, can you see that little groove there? It looks like there used to be like a rubber washer inside of that. And that rubber washer would have made, would have sealed it around the hole. I bet you any money that fell out and I didn't realize it when I took this apart the first time. I should probably look around here and see if I can find it. It was about a month and a half ago, I doubt it. It's probably been vacuumed up. That looks like that could be a bit of a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna have to figure out I got some belts. I used to repair VCRs, and I've got all kinds of belts. Let me see if I can fabricate a rubber washer there and see if we can get this back the way it's supposed to be. Let, let me just take a look, my drawer. All right, let's take got this drawer here full of uh, junk, some old tweeter from a Another set of speakers I had. I was actually digging through this drawer earlier to look for one of these, and that's where I got my hands dirty because this belts are deteriorating. And look, they're all ugh, ugh, ugh. Anyway, okay, so let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna take one of these belts and I'm gonna cut it. That one's got sticky crap on it too. We have any, I wonder if we've got any uh, little idlers, idler tires. That would be the perfect. Here's one here. That's too big though. Yeah, that won't work. Um, let me, I'm, what I'm going to do, these are all covered in, and just, they just deteriorate. They perish over time, these old belts. That's why a lot of times you get VCRs or tape decks, you know, mechanical devices with belts in them. The belts need replacing because they just, they melt basically. Um, I'm going to take this belt and I'm going to make a little, I'm going to make a little washer out of it, cut it and t do that with it and see if I can't duplicate what I think fell out of this thing last time I took it apart. I'll use this belt here. Okay, I've, uh, I didn't want to show it on camera because it took me a little while to get it the right size, but you can see that if I can get that to stay on here, uh, let me get my glasses on so I can actually see what I'm doing. If I can get this to stay on, I don't know if I've got any glue. Mind you, I don't want to glue it on because what if it doesn't work and I can't get it off? Uh, it's going to have to be shorter. I don't know how I'm going to get that to stay in there. That's going to be a pain. Turn this around so you guys can see what the hell I'm doing here. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's that's much better. Much better. Uh, yeah, you can actually see where there might have been some rubber worn off there from what used to be there, which was a little rubber, rubber seal. So I'm just going to see if I can't. It's hard to do this without trying to, without getting in the way so that you guys can see. Well, it's got to be cut shorter. Hang on one second. Okay. Cut a little bit off of it there. If we can get this to just sit inside there. Like that. That should work. That should. There's a tiny little gap right there, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think once we get it all put together, it should. Once I put this on, like that, oh yeah, I can feel it. I can feel it resisting. That's definitely going to work. The only question is, could I turn, can I still turn the volume knob? Yeah, it's, it's pretty stiff actually, but that tells me that this is probably going to work because that tells me that we've got a seal behind there. So let's let's do that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace, let me take this back out again, smooth this down. 
I'm also going to put tape around this jack here um, the way it was when before I took it apart the first time because I think that could have something to do with why and see look they had it all glued on and I couldn't not figure out why they glued the stupid thing all around it like this well that's why because they needed to seal it and I broke all that glue so now I'm gonna have to figure out how the hell I'm gonna fix that because I don't think I have anything around the house that is going to uh, act as a, as a like a caulking or something like that you know what I mean I don't have anything like that I'll stop the camera and I'll have a look around and see if I can find something that I can seal that up with <sighs> okay I have I have electrical tape I have an elastic I do not have any rubber cement I thought I did but I don't know where it is I'm pretty sure that the mo the majority of the problem is the volume control uh, that's not that's not gonna work shoot let me just get some electrical tape and I'll go around this with electrical tape because there's lots of little holes here you see lots of little spaces as long as the holes are very very tiny uh, they won't allow the air to vibrate through them very well at those frequencies if I can get this minimized we should be okay so let me grab some electrical tape here let me see all right I'm just gonna wrap some tape I'll see what we can do I mean I was listening to this the other day I was listening to music and I noticed like a breathing sound like what you heard but I thought maybe just my shelf was rattling a little bit but no this is this is what's going on so what we're gonna do is try you can see I'm kinda I've kinda got it there going around well, they did have tape on this originally and I couldn't understand why I think we're gonna pull off this knob for a second so we can get this around here put one more near the bottom and just make sure that it gets nice and stuck to the bottom of the board there. Get that on there. What do you think? <laughs> That's kind of what it looked like before I when I took it apart the first time. Let's just see if we can press down on this bottom part here to get it so that it's sealed fairly well. I think this is going to make a big difference, guys. I think it will. I've seen things like this before. I have to put it back together. Oh, put the knob on first. Which means I'm going to have to try to line it up here. I think it's got a key. There it is. Yeah, it's got a keyhole. A little key on it so you can only put it on one way. All right. Let's get that back in there. Like that. Well, guys, what do you think, huh? see what we've got well listen let's put the screws back in and if I can find them and uh, you know put this all back together and see what happens see what happens I suppose if I needed to in the future um, I could uh, I could get a new one of these, I could order it from Alesis, an entire new board, because it just unplugs. It, you know, you can just take it out. So eventually, maybe what I will do, if this doesn't work properly, or even if it does, I'll order a part and get a new whole new board for this. And just put it in. But for now, let's see what happens. I'm just going to put the um, other screws in here. And I'll put it all back together. Oh, I'll show you one more thing, by the way. I didn't film this, but one of these speakers needed a new capacitor. It didn't work when I got it. It wasn't this speaker, it was the other speaker. Um, this, this capacitor, I'll zoom in so you can see. That capacitor, let's see if I can, right there. You see how that's bulging? See how it's kind of... Yeah, like a little dome on top. It shouldn't be that way. Now, the other speaker 
this capacitor was actually leaking, and that's why the speaker wouldn't work. Because these speakers have built-in amplifiers, as you can see, right? They've got their own amplifiers built in. Now, that capacitor is part of the power supply, and this is the power supply unit here, most of it. And that one needed to be replaced, which I did do on the other speaker, and it works. This one looks like it's going to need to be done eventually. Okay. So when this speaker stops working, I'll know that's the culprit. And it's a common problem with these particular speakers, believe it or not. At least it was. I don't know if it still is. Um, so get this back in there. Okay. Now we're just going to turn it back around like this. And we're going to reconnect the... Uh, wires Let's zoom out I need a cameraman what I need goes this way okay now this is where I have to be really careful because the woofer and the tweeter have different circuits and connect to different circuits and if you connect them up wrong in other words if you if you hook the this is the LED for the LED which I've taped to put a piece of tape. Actually, I should just pull that out, but oh, it doesn't matter. Put a piece of tape over it because it's too bright. Um, if you hook the woofer up to the tweeter line and the tweeter up to the woofer line, you will blow your tweeter. Hands down, as soon as you turn the speakers on, tweeter's gone, you're done. So I have to make sure, see it says tweeter right there, and I know that the wire that I'm holding, I'm looking down inside, and well, actually, let me, just, let me just take this up. I'll just show you. No, the whole thing just came out. <laughs> Great. It's okay. Let me show you the inside of the speaker, in case you're interested. All right. So there, there is... Let me just zoom out a little bit here. There is the woofer, the big guy. Does all the bass work. And underneath, way inside there, you can see the magnet, is the tweeter. And these little tubes... Those are those holes in the front that I showed you earlier, see? Okay, and those are tuned base ports. They resonate at a very low frequency and allows the air to move in and out of this cabinet very efficiently at lower frequencies. And that's what gives you the base, the big base that these speakers have, all right? So there's the inside. That's how that looks. Now, what I've got to do, again, is hook these up. So I've got my tweeter here. Let's just grab our little LED, which also has to be hooked on. The whole socket came out, but the pins are still there. Let's get that on there if we can. There we go. If that's not hooked up properly, uh, the LED won't light up because LEDs are polarized. And then we'll just, this is the tweeter. It goes to tweeter. That, and then the woofer. There we go. All right, are we good to go? Is everything connected? Yeah. All right. Okay. There we go. All right, I'm going to put the screws in here. Let's hook it up and see if it works. All right, so there we are. We're all hooked up. I just grabbed my camera, and it's all going. Now let's turn up the volume. First, we'll listen to... Uh, the right speaker, the one that was working properly. But what you're going to hear mostly is the air that's coming out of these things, see? See, if I cover them up. Alright, let's switch it to the left side and see if it worked. And it did! Wow! Awesome. All I'm hearing is these now. I'm not hearing the other the other air coming out of the back. So I fixed it. Yay! <laughs> I better turn that down before all the furniture upstairs moves around. There we go, guys. I fixed it and I'm glad and I'm happy. That's great. I'll probably will order a new board for that speaker, but right now they're working Perfectly. And when that capacitor goes in that speaker, I will definitely drag out the camera and show you how I repaired the first speaker, the first one that went 
the capacitor went. Actually, the capacitor that I have, I have it, I have it set aside, believe it or not. I couldn't find the, saw, the small capacitor that you saw, but I did find, see, look, now there, see? There is the stuff that came off that, that jack. That's what I talked about. See how it was glued on? I kept it just in case. I might have actually, I didn't even know I had this. I should have just put it back on and then put tape around it. But anyway, it works. Here is the replacement capacitor that I will be putting in when that one bites the bullet. It's bigger. It doesn't fit in the space. But when I did the first speaker, I actually kind of jerry-rigged it so that I was able to put wires on these terminals and then stick them in and solder them onto the board. And that was how I did that. And the capacitor is just sort of strapped, like taped onto something so that it doesn't move around and rattle. And that's what I did. So that's set aside for when that one goes. Now, you guys are probably hoping that's going to happen soon. I'm not. But when it does happen, we'll put that in and we'll... Um, time for a beer. Cheers, guys, and hope to see you back on the next episode of Craig's Dungeon!